Aboriginals from southwestern Australia and from northeastern Australia are more genetically distinct from one another than Native Americans are from Siberians. Within a single landmass, diversity flourished for tens of thousands of years, untouchable and uninterrupted. This fact unsettles familiar narratives about human history. It reveals a story of extraordinary depth, ancient continuity, and a cultural landscape that has remained intimately connected to its first inhabitants across more than a thousand generations. The First Peoples of Australia represent some of the oldest continuous human lineages outside Africa. Genetic research shows that the ancestors of indigenous Australians separated early from all other peoples who left Africa, and they reached the ancient continent of Sahul long before Europe, East Asia, or the Americas experienced consistent modern human occupation. Sahul was a supercontinent that joined Australia, Tasmania and New Guinea during the Ice Age, when sea levels were significantly lower than today. Its first settlers likely arrived at least 47,000 years ago, and possibly earlier. To reach this landmass, they would have made multiple open ocean crossings through the islands of Southeast Asia, demonstrating advanced planning, memory, and seafaring capability. Once they arrived, they became almost completely isolated from the rest of the world. Deep ocean channels kept Sahul separated from Asia, even at the lowest sea levels. As a result, there were no large waves of incoming settlement to reshape or replace the founding populations. While Europe was later influenced by waves of farmers from Anatolia and herders from the Eurasian steppes, and while Asia experienced repeated demographic turnovers, the peoples of Australia remained primarily descended from the original settlers who first stepped onto the continent during the last Ice Age. Over enormous spans of time, this isolation allowed Aboriginal Australian groups to diverge from one another. The distances between these groups were not measured solely in miles, but in generations. Some groups became separated by vast desert interiors, which could be impassable during colder and drier climatic periods. Others remained in tropical rainforests or temperate coastal regions. This ecological variety nurtured cultural diversity, linguistic complexity and deep genetic structure. By over 25,000 years ago, and likely even earlier, populations in northeastern Australia were already distinct from those living in the southwestern deserts. The magnitude of this separation is extraordinary. Their divergence is almost as old as the split between Europeans and East Asians. To appreciate how unusual this is, it helps to compare the situation to the history of the Americas. Native Americans trace most of their ancestry to a small population that lived in the region of Beringia, the territory that once connected Siberia and Alaska during the last Ice Age. These communities began moving into the Americas around 20,000 years ago, spreading rapidly southward. Although there is considerable cultural and genetic diversity throughout the Americas, this time depth is only a fraction of the Australian record. In addition, populations in Siberia continued to experience exchange with neighbouring peoples across Asia. Even large geographic distances did not create the same degree of enduring separation found across the Australian continent. Thus, Native Americans and Siberians, separated by an ocean and the breadth of the Northern Hemisphere, are often less divergent than groups living within Australia. Why did Australia develop such deep divergence within its borders? The answer lies partly in its geography. Much of central Australia is dominated by arid desert. During the coldest phase of the last ice age, these deserts expanded dramatically, creating vast interior zones that were extremely difficult to cross. These regions functioned as natural boundaries, restricting movement and contact. While coastal groups might interact and spread cultural knowledge across large distances, inland populations could remain isolated for extended periods. Over thousands of years, these barriers reinforced local identities and produced distinct genetic lineages. Another factor is the remarkable time depth of continuous occupation. The first peoples of Australia not only arrived early but remained in place. In other regions, entire populations could be replaced. The earliest modern humans in Europe were largely replaced by later groups. In India and East Asia, waves of migration brought new peoples with different cultural and genetic backgrounds. Over time, these additional layers of ancestry blurred ancient population boundaries. Australia experienced none of this large-scale replacement. The result was a genetic landscape preserved like a palimpsest, 
where regional differences deepened over tens of thousands of years, rather than being overwritten. The environment also played a role in shaping human biology. Life in the interior deserts required specialised strategies for survival. Aboriginal groups developed complex systems of knowledge to track water sources, navigate seasonal changes and manage food supplies across enormous territories. Genetic signals suggest adaptations related to thermal regulation and dehydration tolerance, reflecting the demands of desert life. In other parts of the continent, including tropical savannas and temperate coastal zones, people encountered very different climates and ecosystems. This mosaic of environments produced mosaic histories, each distinct but linked by a shared origin. Another interesting trait of Aboriginal Australians is their thick, wavy hair. This actually makes them the outlier in the regions, because Papuans and Tasmanians have kinky hair, as do their close relatives the Onge of the Andaman Islands and Negritos of the Philippines. After the earliest ancestors of Sahul reached the united landmass of Australia, New Guinea and Tasmania over 47,000 years ago, the population did not remain genetically uniform for long. As sea levels rose and ecological zones expanded and shifted, communities became increasingly separated by distance, landscape and climate. One of the earliest major divisions occurred between the peoples who remained in northern Sahul, in the region that would later become New Guinea, and those who moved southward into the Australian continent. This split was already underway by more than 37,000 years ago, marking the beginning of distinct Papuan and Australian lineages. Later, as the last ice age ended and glaciers melted, rising seas flooded the land bridge between southeastern Australia and Tasmania, isolating the Tasmanian population roughly 10 to 12,000 years ago. Cut off from the mainland, Tasmanians evolved as a separate branch of the first peoples of Sahul, preserving an ancient heritage shaped by millennia of isolation at the far southern edge of the world. Because Australia was occupied so early and remained so isolated, its genetic history preserves information that has been lost elsewhere. It offers a rare glimpse into the world of early modern humans shortly after their dispersal from Africa. The ancestors of Aboriginal Australians appear to have separated from the ancestors of other non-African peoples shortly after leaving Africa. From this early point onward, they followed their own trajectory, eventually reaching Sahul and diverging from the populations that remained in Eurasia. In this way, Aboriginal Australians form a sister lineage to all other peoples outside Africa. This early divergence contributes to the depth of difference between them and other world populations. Within Australia, genetic relationships follow geography with unusual clarity. Groups located near one another are more closely related than groups separated by the vast interior. Northeastern groups tend to show closer ties with populations from New Guinea, reflecting ancient contact across the Sahul landmass. Meanwhile, southwestern desert groups carry particularly deep genetic signatures, reflecting long periods of isolation. These patterns reveal the movement of ancestors along coasts and river systems, as well as periods when shifting climates constrain travel. The interior likely served both as a pathway during favourable climates and as a formidable barrier during arid phases. All of this creates a striking picture. Australia is not genetically uniform. It is a continent of deep regional histories. The discontinuities across its landscapes are not recent inventions, but ancient features sculpted by time, climate and culture. The magnitude of internal variation is so great that it outstrips the genetic distance between major continental blocks elsewhere in the world. This is a unique circumstance. Few regions on Earth can claim such antiquity without interruption. This understanding challenges popular assumptions about diversity. Many people imagine that Africa holds the most genetic variation, while other continents show less. It is true that Africa contains the highest level of global diversity. Yet within the non-African world, Australia stands apart. Every region has its story of how it came to be, but Australia's story is exceptional in its preservation of ancient structure. Where many lands were shaped by waves of migrants, Australia bore a single founding population, then fractured and diversified internally for tens of thousands of years. No outside force erased this history until the modern era. This deep record survived not as fossil bones or buried tools alone, but in the genomes of living descendants. 
This story also reframes our understanding of how humans adapted to new environments. The settlement of Sahul required not only physical endurance, but social cooperation, ecological understanding and innovation. This knowledge allowed people to occupy nearly every type of environment on the continent, from tropical coasts to alpine highlands to arid deserts. Over time, these adaptations became woven into the genetic fabric of different groups. That fabric, in turn, offers a rare window into the earliest chapters of humanity's expansion across the globe. The singular depth of this history is what makes the comparison to Native Americans and Siberians so powerful. Despite the enormous geographic distance between Siberia and the Americas, the divergence between these two populations is relatively modest because it occurred only within the last 20,000 years and because their ancestral populations experienced later contact and migration. In Australia, by contrast, population divisions began early, persisted through the last ice age and remained largely untouched by external forces. Thus, genetic distances within Australia, across a single continent, are greater than between two major continental regions separated by a vast ocean and half the Northern Hemisphere. Australia, in this sense, serves as a time capsule. It preserves the memory of a world where small communities could diverge in relative isolation over immense durations. This was likely common across the planet during the early stages of human expansion. Today, however, only Australia preserves this deep continuity.